Hello! Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's good to see you. I mean, it's been a while. Recording it's in progress. Recording in progress. I love her sexy voice. Um, <laughs> so Stephanie Cake is uh, recording these, the shows, right? Recording them on Zoom. That voice, you know, you probably know her well at this point. The pandy, as my sister would say. Um, got us all, well, I mean, not everybody, right? But a lot of us got familiar with Zoom. Recording in progress. I was actually using Zoom before they told you that people were recording. Not that I was like surreptitiously recording people, but you know, I remember when it was like, oh God, you know. Um, so good evening, welcome to Quilt Nerd. Uh, Quilt Nerd used to be called Quilt Church. It didn't, it didn't last that long because, you know, it was like church, I don't know, you know, church is fine. If that's your thing, that's great. But, you know, we love quilts around here, but we don't like you to worship them or whatever. But the reason that this was called Quilt Church for a hot second is because it's like kind of like where we come to like, you know, soak in the stuff that we love. Like we pay homage to this, this stuff, right? This quilt stuff. And as I was telling my friend Sarah today, who you'll hear more about in just a minute, um, I was like, she was like, tell me about the thing that you're doing. And I'm like, well, I get to host a show on the internet, you know, and it's about art and women and um, history and philosophy and all of these things. You remember the Aunt Jane of Kentucky quote I read you? I really ought to commit that to memory. You know what? I promise you that I will do that, that Aunt Jane of Kentucky uh, quote. In fact, hang on, hang on. I know just where it is, in fact, because I did write it down. That's the first step in memorizing something. <clears throat> just in case you forgot. Quote from 1907 Patchwork, I mean, uh, from Aunt Jane of Kentucky by Eliza Calvert Hall. Quote, Patchwork, ah, no. It was memory, imagination, history, biography, joy, sorrow, philosophy, religion, romance, realism, life, love, and death. And overall, like a halo, the love of the artist for his work and the soul's longing for earthly immortality." Unquote. Oh, it's so good, it's so good. I will memorize it, I promise. And I won't overuse it because I want it to be magical for you, you know. Anyway, so um, I just wanted to tell you something that I was thinking about today because I saw my friend Sarah, ooh, I saw my friend Sarah, who was my best friend in college, and she and I lived together, great parties, and um, I hadn't seen her in, well, her daughter, they're on a mother-daughter trip here to Chicago, and Dorothy's eight, and she's perfect, and she's amazing, and she might be watching right now, and um, the, la the last time I met Dorothy, Sarah was pregnant with her, so today was a pretty special day. And the t-shirt that I'm wearing is from the architectural boat tour here in Chicago. It's like Captain Wendella or whatever. Sarah was like, I'm gonna get you a t-shirt. And I was like, don't do it. She did it. And I said, well, I'll wear it on the show tonight. And Dorothy was like, can we watch the show, mom? Can we watch the show? And I was like, you can watch the show if you want, you know, but it's, you know, it's late. You've been out all day, you know, you might get tired. And so I don't know if they're tuning in right now or if they will, but I promised Dorothy, and I have a picture of her, but I texted Sarah, I was like, is it okay to show the pictures from today, you know, until I get permission, I, don't, I won't do it. I'll show a picture of me and Sarah. Um, but I promised Dorothy, I was like, you know what? Every 20 minutes, I'll give you a shout out on the show. And so Dorothy, if you're listening, or if you're listening later, every 20 minutes is what I'm gonna do. It's only for you tonight, you ready? That's your, that's your shout out every 20 minutes. I might not announce it. I might not say, Dorothy, here's your shout out, but I might. But when you hear that, you'll know, okay? You're amazing, you're amazing. I love your mother. And so what I was thinking, I was like, what am I gonna say tonight, you know, to sort of start the show off, you know? Cause I do this thing now, where I sort of start the show with a little moment before we jump into visuals and look at quilts. And I was like, what do I wanna, I mean, I wanna talk about Sarah. That's what I wanna talk about. It's all I wanna talk about. In fact, I'll show you her picture right now because I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. I gotta get small. Help, help, I'm small. We're gonna talk about this, uh, this quilt here in just a second, but look, look at this woman. Oh, 
I can't, I mean, oh my goodness. How much do you love a person? You know, like me and Greer, man. Mm. It was it was really wonderful to see her. I'm gonna see her again on Sunday, which will be great. She's the she's a captain. She's a boat captain. She sails huge ships out of New York Harbor. Yeah, yeah. She's she's amazing. She she's like well, you know, those other ones have Dorothy in them. I'm just gonna wait. Um, but she uh, she she's like well, we were working on the. I'm building a fireplace in my house. I was like, of course you're do. Of course you are. She's like, I haven't worked on the house in a long time, but we're doing a fireplace. Dorothy helped me varnish it. I was like, of course you did. So being with Sarah was incredible. And I thought about how when I got married the first time, uh, my do-over was, a, was a, better, a better choice. But when I got married the first time, Sarah was at the wedding, of course. And she, uh, my mom gave her a quilt. And I was thinking about another friend that I have, Christina. And Christina, I gave her and she actually just moved to New York City and she said, I said, what can, you know, what can I send you? What can I do for you? And she said, I could use another Mary Pond's quilt. So I'm gonna send her another quilt. And my point here tonight is that you could, you could make your arguments, make your arguments, but I challenge you, what is a better gift than a quilt? I know, this show was about film, like we probably gonna, you know, if it was a show about you know, duck decoys or something. You'd be like, what is a better gift than a duck decoy? You know, you don't have to water it. You know, it's not gonna biodegrade. It's not heavy. Well, I mean. But really though, I mean, it's your time. It's your time. You have to take time to make it. And some quilts you make for people and you don't even know you're gonna give them to them. I just gave a quilt to Azure and Trevor for their wedding and I made it years ago, but I just didn't do anything with it. I mean, it, was, it wasn't like this old thing. It was like, I knew that this quilt was gonna be for someone and now it's theirs. And I put a really special label on it. And I mean, I just, I gotta get some quilts done so I can give them away, you know? And the quilt, it's just, it's the best thing because it, it's functional. It's beautiful and it's functional. And that's what I love about quilts so much. And that's why when you put quilts up on the wall as art, you know, it's confusing to some extent, a little bit. I'm not saying it's bad or we don't want that, but, but the quilt is functional. And that's, I mean, at its most basic level, right? It's most, I should say, fundamental level. It's like very beautiful and it takes time for a human to make. And then you can put it on your, you, on your body to sleep and stay warm. And it's like a hug. I mean, come on, like, what are you gonna do? If you give a quilt at the baby shower, you win. Sorry, you just win. You win. Wait, no, no, okay. Oh my God, that was so loud. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It's, 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 hard. it's hard to do better than a quilt. It's, it's a pretty good one. And also, um, you, don't have to, you don't have to make a fancy quilt. I mean, if it's just like a simple thing, it's like, that's the point, you know? So, Sarah and Dorothy, I love you very much. And it was great to see you today. Okay, so actually, the next thing we're gonna do, so welcome everybody, Crafts for Others, Auntie Sin. I, I heard SJ Pepper's in the house, SJ Pepper. We play that because she's trouble. She's trouble in the chat. She's trouble on the show. Um, I Steph was like, Lady K, I think Lady K said she and her husband are too, too, two glasses of wine in, and she was like, did she say two bottles of wine in? Obviously she knows this because Lady K said that in the chat, so I am loving it. Lady K, you're on watch. No, you're not on watch, you're great. Um, Robin is here, hello Robin, and Padma. Um, younger audience, yes, no swearing. Oh no, 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 no swears, no swears. I caught myself today, I was gonna say something. Um, hey Kenny, 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 Kenny. IWC, it's so good to see you too. L Riggs is here. L Riggs, we need to catch up. Um, my great cats, it's so good to see you. Gamer Granny, oh my God, GG. GG62. Um, I'm not even reading SJ Pepper's comments. Okay, Teacher Stitch. <gasps> Teacher Stitch. A little champagne, a little champagne for it. Lulu Paperbird, oh my God. Okay, the gang's all here and many people haven't identified yet, but I will see you. And anybody watching, 
through YouTube or Facebook, it's good to see you. So I'm going to play something, because you know we don't have that many days left to play it, so I have to play it. I gotta get small again. This, I'm, it's my finest hour, it's my proudest accomplishment, <laughs> is this animation about September. And I'm gonna play it, because we only have, what, it's September 24th. How many days in September, Cake? 30? 30 days, half, half September. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Half September, right? Half September. Half yeah. September. Half, 30 days, half September. So, uh, yeah, so I mean, we got to play this thing because there's not a lot of time to get in on September. And September, folks have been into it. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big sale on subscriptions. And so I hope that you will subscribe to the show because you support the show. And the show takes a lot. It's a lot. Okay, I'm going to cut myself off here. Hang on, hang on. All right, let's check this out. What is this? What is this? Oh, Dorothy, I hope you're watching. Oh, my God. Okay. And now, a word about September here on Twitch, starring me. Hi. Really? It's Susanna. So, you know Folk Nerd, you love Folk Nerd, and you want to support Folk Nerd. This month is a great time to do it, September 2022. The longer you subscribe to Quilt Nerd, the more you save. Everything's on sale. You get 20% off one-month subs, 25% off three-month subs, and 30% off six-month subs. And Mary gets the same percentage. Bex is wondering, hmm, which channel should I use this uh, discount for? Quilt Nerd, of course. We need your support. Not only do you support the show with a subscription, you get stuff. What do you get? It depends on the tier you sign up at. <laughs> Access to the Discord, ad-free experience, special streams, emotes. Just go to the channel page and click the About tab, and you'll see all the stuff you can get. We need your support. Subscribing is loving. If you love the show, please consider subscribing. And now we gotta get to the show. <laughs> God. <laughs> I told you, my finest hour. I've never loved anything more that I've made than that, except the show. So please subscribe, it really helps support the show. And tomorrow, by the way, tomorrow is the Sunday Social. And so we, I, I did this in the beginning of Quilt Nerd where I would do like a Sunday Social stream, right? And so with you, we all hang out. It was great, it was so great. I was like, this should be a perk. It should be a perk that's private to subscribers. Tier two and tier three subscribers get to hang out on the Sunday Social and it's really fun. And tomorrow the Sunday Social is show and tell. So we're gonna look at your projects on the show, the special VIP show. You know, it's, it's, it's good, it's good. Uh, the, the, the Mary Wranglers that I'm working with these days, they've been really, really good about like being like, you know, let's shape these subscriptions. You know, I'm not, I mean, I wanted to do it too, but, the, but I don't have ideas like, like that very much. <laughs> so, so I've been really, really grateful for like, hey, you know, how can we make this show keep going into the future? And things like, you know, like the Sunday Social is a, is a total perk for subscribers and uh, it's a really good idea and I love it. So tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central, we're gonna do a show and tell. And so, so that'll be good. Good times. Okay, so here we go. We're launching into the show. I need to say hello to Stephanie. Stephanie Cake. She's my she's my partner in crime. <laughs> partner in crime, Steph. I'm infamous. She's infamous. She's infamous. And she just got a haircut <laughs> and it looks so cute. I did, you know. Yeah. I, I'm in a show and they're they, it's a tiny gallery show, so they, they use a little Playmobil person yeah. as the, the artist. Yeah. And she asked me, she said, I don't have a, I don't have a, a Playmobil character with glasses, but what is your, your hair is, is short, right? And I'm like, well, it, it wasn't until today. <laughs> Good timing. Good timing. Yeah, perfect. It looks really good. It's not like short, right? It's like, but you had one yeah. night, one night, I wish, you could, I wish you could see her. She had like Heidi braids. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. And Susanna, the pie that you heard, Susanna, you know, she's in Q8. She's sleeping right now, but she always watched the replay. A lot of you guys watch the replay, and that's all good. I know what it's like. You can't get to every live stream, but Pi, we, we're here for it. We love you. Oh, and our newest, our lady of subscriptions, Robin, Robin's Nest Creations, who's here in the chat. Um, God bless you. I need you. We need you to help us manage things. And we were like, let's just, you know, three of these cake, biscuit, you know, the bakery items is enough. We're not going to continue the metaphor forever. But I was like, what do you want to be? Because you got to round out, you know, this whole bakery thing. And she was like, she thought, she's a very thoughtful woman. She was like, I'm going to go with Biscuit. And I was like, well done. That's what I do. I invented Post-its. Yeah. 
So, well, I mean, we're, I'm just very grateful to all of you. So, um, okay. So what we do to start the show off, by the way, tonight we're going to talk about quilting frames. Yeah. We've never really talked about them, but before we talk about quilting frames, cause like, what's up with that, right? Quilting frames. Does anybody use them anymore? I don't know. What were they like? We're going to read a little bit about them and see some diagrams and some beautiful pictures of them, learn about them. Uh, that's the second part of the show. The first part of the show, we're going to look at Jane Birch Cochran. She's so great. She's so great. Um, an art quilter. She lives in Rabbit Hatch, Kentucky, where they have a dog for a mayor. Yeah. Yeah, dog for a mayor. Yeah. Every year. Uh, I or every. Live there. I know. I want to live there too. It was awesome. I got to visit uh, her doing a quilt folk story. So we're going to look at her. But the intro quilt is where we start. And the intro quilt tonight, I have questions. I have questions for you. This is a question intro quilt situation. Okay. I don't like doing a narrow quilt for the intro quilt because, you know, it's not as aesthetically, you know, like whatever. So, so here we are zoomed in on this. Now this is a quilt. I just, I need an opinion on this. Okay. Hey, Susan. Hey, Linda. Uh, Quiltish is here. Quiltish, hello. We got a bets in the chat. Hope Quilts. Oh my God. It's so good to see you. Yvonne. Mm. Girl, what do I have? I got a Cabernet Sauvignon straight up. Cabernet Sauvignon straight up. So here's my question. Here's my question. Do you, what do you think of this quilt? I know that's kind of a general question, but this, this quilt I'm seeing lately online. I found this on, what was it? Cherish or some online site. And it is, they say it's 1930s. Now our friend Mary Kay Waldvogel, our friend Barbara Brackman, both of whom I'm going to see next week <gasps> at AQSG seminar in San Diego. Oh, oh my God. I mean, have you all met Barbara Brackman? Well, you're going to, she's camera shy, but anyway, we're, we'll corner her <laughs> uh, and talk to her. But, um, but, you know, they could tell us everything about this, this kind of quilt. Um, 1930s. Okay. Like, okay. To me, it seemed, well, I don't know. It just feels later than that. I don't know. Every every time I see these, I'm just like, was it really the Depression era? I don't know. Maybe it's because a lot of the Depression era quilts seemed extremely scrappy to me or just like full of a lot of patchwork I didn't see. I don't know. I'm just, I just, I don't know. I shouldn't talk like that because I don't know. But look at this wonderful thing. So my question to you is, do you think, and really search inside yourself, do you think that this will become like popular slash collectible again? Now, everything goes in and out of fashion. I understand that, you know? Um, so like the answer is probably yes. But like to me, let me go back to the full thing. To me, I feel like, are we there yet with these antique pictorial quilts? Because you know, around here, we love a pictorial quilt. We love any times there's like, like animals or people on quilts, like we love it. But I just, like, I mean, I might even do a poll. Hey, Mother Nature. Hey, Stitch and Deb. It's a, it, Stitch and Deb says it's adorable. The motifs look more 50s. Thank you, Kenny. But the colors are 30s, right? Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. Oh my God. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know why that sounds bad. So, so, but there's something about it. I don't, what is the word that I want? I mean, the, he's great. Look at him. He's so sweet. He's so sweet, but it seems like, um, what am I trying to, like there's an Alice in Wonderland feel to it, which I know we looked at an Alice in Wonderland quilt not too long ago. What is it about it? It doesn't, does it seem not, is it cool? Like that's the thing, like is this kind of quilt cool? And by the way, I've got a couple more pictures of this one, but I brought up a couple others. The old woman's shoe, right? Like the old woman's shoe. Is Stephanie Cake, talk to me. Okay, I'm loving the old woman in the shoe. You love it. I just love that they the have other, a, the old woman on a child's yeah, I mean, quilt. Like, yeah. <laughs> An old lady with a million children lives in a shoe. Yeah, exactly. Where's my husband? <laughs> She's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the quilt before, you know, it's, as yeah. I'm sitting there, like, that was my initial reaction was it's like, oh, it's mid-century, somewhere between 30s and 50s. Right. But right. I'm also thinking, you know, it's got almost like that... Uh, and I don't know if I'm probably I'm probably giving it the wrong term, but like that Swedish design. Okay, look, sure. Like that Maramiko kind of. Yeah. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. it, uh, so like it could almost be contemporary mm. in some ways, but so like some of those design, you know, designers. But mm -hmm. I also, I mean, I really do think it's mid-century. But I know 30s just doesn't seem right. And look at this one. Mm -hmm. So they said that 
about, they said 1930s for this too. This is like a Humpty Dumpty thing. I, give, I think maybe part of it, okay. Looking at Humpty Dumpty, I'm gonna do a poll. I'm just gonna do a straight up, do you like these quilts poll? Oh no, come back, come back, not you. Um, I'm gonna do a poll straight up, do you, are you into these quilts or not? Cause I wanna know. Um, Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Um, I think something, there's something about it that I just realized that's like the juvenilia. Oh, stop. The, juven, the juvenile. It's very juvenile. And in and, and the classic sense of the term, right? Like it's for children. And maybe that's why it just isn't like, it doesn't scale up or something. Maybe that's it. I mean, the pale pastel. I'm just wondering, because here's the thing about these quilts. They are... I mean, this one, I forget how much this one is, but they average around like $450. And it's not a child's quilt to wrap the child up in really, right? Like, isn't it for the nursery? Like, it's like a bedspread. Let me, let me get this yes, poll going. you know what? It does give me that vibe. Like, it's part of a collection of something. And they didn't do that in the 30s. I don't know when they really started doing that. I Maybe, I mean, probably before we were babies, but... Yeah, right? Yeah, that, like, themed kind of stuff was not really a thing. But I could see this, like, right? With, like, the tissue box that has the little house right, on it. Right, right. Uh, yes. A, a diaper pail thing with a flat, you know, the, the kite, <laughs> yeah. you know? <laughs> like, do they smell like diapers? Like, I feel like the quilt, like, slightly smells like a... You know, which is fine. Um, by the way, the poll is live, so in the chat box and everything, these different devices, they do things differently, so it's kind of, just in case. Um, you set your timer though, right, Steph? I, I just thought of it and I got scared that Dorothy was watching, and it, just remind me, and if, if I, or you all can remind me, I mean, someone will remind me, right? Um, but um, anyway, yeah, I just, I just, um, yeah, what, what was I saying? I don't know. Oh, yeah, the poll is live. Different devices have different, you know, interfaces, right? I mean, stuff, you know, you and I are, like, constantly worrying with, you know, how does the show look on people's iPad versus their Android phone and stuff like that. But the, the poll is live, and I would love to know what you think. Here's another one. Crafts for Others isn't into it. You're like, no. Elle Riggs is like, I'm ambivalent. They're okay, but I have no desire to have or make one. Interesting. Padma says, how collectible are baby quilts in general? Interesting, Jill, oh, Jill. Jill's working at the museum. Gamer Granny says she feels like something would be on the wall when I was a kid in the 60s. Exactly, now look at this one. This is interesting. Oh, and I have information about this quilt, sorry. Um, what we have about this one is beautiful cotton 30s pictorial crib quilt. I don't know, I mean, Mary Kay, if you're in here, I gotta say, like you're usually usually in the lurker lounge, and you can totally be there. It's all good, but um, I am very curious if anyone knows if this is actually 1930s. Okay, anyway, um, I read something interesting from Barbara Brackman though today. That's kind of spooky. Um, Barbara Brackman came up earlier, but she was talking in the Quilt Index, this article in the Quilt Index about how Depression era quilts all get sort of lumped into this one kind of quilt. It's funny. I mean, I just read this today, and she's like. They were all very different, so I shouldn't talk about things I don't know. Anyway, this beautiful cotton 1930s pictorial crib quilt, this is from the seller, is all hand appliqued and hand quilted. I mean, you gotta admit, the little flowers are really great. Um, hand appliqued and hand quilted. Um, uh, with a nice blue background and hand embroidered accents. It measures 34 by 50 and is in very good condition with light surface dirt in places and no wear. There's the back. The little sailboat's awfully cute. These look like eggs, the little, oh, what happened? Oh my God, oh, how embarrassing. It's like my, I tucked my skirt into my pantyhose. Okay, um, the, the grid, uh, Straight line quilting, eight stitches to the inch. Interesting. Wonderful blue background and detailed applique make this vintage collector's quilt stand out. Anyway, so there's this one too. I think this is the last one I have. This is a Chanticleer. I've seen this before. This is interesting to me. To me, this looks less like a, ch this looks mid-century to me for sure. Right, I mean, it's amazing. Now I've seen this kind of, this motif of the chicken or the 
I mean, the what's the male version of the chicken? You know, don't a say rooster? it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, that watching. that guy is kind of cocky. He's thank you, Stephanie. God bless you. You saved the moment. The rooster. I couldn't think of the other. Oh God. Anyway, so this is this is cool to me because this looks like. I mean, it looks a little bit, not Charles Eames maybe, but like this is very stylistic, very graphic, you know? So this is sold also as a children's quilt from the 1930s, which seems crazy to me. And it's $575. And like, to me, this, like the little chicks around the side with the broken eggs make it more children's quilt-like. But other than that, this seems just like cool to me. Like this seems pretty cool to me. The the Humpty Dumpty, I mean, you just, if you're an adult and you hang a quilt with Humpty Dumpty on it in your house, like, like, okay, like interesting quilt. Tell me about it, you know? But this thing is like pretty cool. Like maybe, I don't know, the, the little chick, the little chicklings, chicklings, chicklets, chickadees, what are they? Chicks. They're just chicks. They're just chicks. Just chicks. You know, just chicks, they're birds, the birds. Uh, yeah. Oh, look at, oh, look at that. Look at the border. Hang on. Oh, that's so cool. Isn't that great? It looks like it's folded up. I feel like the person who designed this, I feel like it was a woman and I feel like she was trained in art. You know what I mean? I just feel like it was, yeah. I also feel she, like she was like, you know what? I'm at home all day. Take care of these kids yeah. and you're strutting around in your fancy suit. That's There you go. She's like, I am a beautiful line drawing. Simple, beautiful, minimalistic, fabulous. You are a lot, <laughs> sir, sir. Okay, so interesting, so let's see. So, okay, the poll, has the poll ended? I do know that right, yeah, the poll's ended. Okay, the poll has ended, and it's pretty close, but 57% of you say yes. Yeah, Pam, I should have said, is the quilt hot or not? You're so right, Pam Burrito, you got it. Um, Pecky Belly, hi. Um, oh, you're total, oh my, Pecky Belly, you're so, that's a great question. Becky Belly asked, are we allowed to not like a quilt at Quilt Nerd? A thousand percent. Actually, on the show next week, well, we're going to do quilts and money, which is very interesting. It was a content director request. Quilts and money. It's not just quilts in the shape of dollar bills or anything like that. I have like, I've taken a very, what I think is hopefully a pretty cool angle on quilts and money. Egg money quilts, perhaps. Chinese coin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I, I, I got this, right? I got this, you guys. But, um... Yeah, yeah, uh, we're gonna talk about, about, uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Oh no! Next week we're gonna talk about, I was talking about chicks. There was something, there was something! <laughs> anyway. Um, well, Mary, can we talk about the poll? I think it's yeah. interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. People are, yeah. are kind of split, but a little bit more on the side of, yes, thumbs up to, I guess, baby quilts or juvenile quilts being valuable or still appreciated or. Yeah. I think it's interesting because I know I think people that are not necessarily attracted to sort of juvenile things probably mm -hmm. look at these quilts and say, "Great for baby, not for sure. me." Sure. Mm -hmm. um, I personally still love toys, so <laughs> these kind of things just delight me. But I kind of wonder if people tend to look at these things as a little bit more disposable because I mean, yeah, even if it's hanging on the wall in the baby's nursery, mm -hmm. it's still unless it's you know nobody's allowed to touch it or right. you know it, it's still gonna it's still a, a child's item that can right. easily be soiled or ruined or, yes yes and maybe it's got more of a disposable quality to it and they're they're more they're always more they're more simple quilts they're usually mm -hmm. not very mm -hmm. you know well there's that that baby uh crazy quilt the one that's got baby in the middle oh and yeah that's super ornate you remember that one? yeah oh yeah that that's being the exception one. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly yeah this says baby just in case anybody forgets you know who it's for um, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's just, I don't know, the, the baby quilt thing, oh, look, it's me, my friends here, oh my god, um, the baby quilt thing is, uh, is interesting, and there's, I want to talk about it at some point, I have a big folder full of them, I was working on a YouTube video about it, I mean, baby quilts used to be small versions of adult quilts, I mean, they were just, because children's lives looked so different, from what they do today, you know? They were working. These kids were like working in the um, in the farm or, you know, in the farm. They were working in the farm. The farm, what is a farm? Um, they were, you know, they were doing that and like, you know, going to the 
factory in some cases, but yeah, it's just very, children's quilts, the way they've changed, very, very interesting, very interesting. Oh, wait, we're gonna look at quilt frames in just a little bit, but now, now, thank you everybody for weighing in. Bonnie, hello, and Bridgewater, I didn't say hi to you, I saw you in the chat, I'm catching up. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the discussion. Not all pictorial quilts, Bonnie, are children's quilts. Don't we know it? We know it. And oh yeah, yeah, I was saying, oh yeah, 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 okay, I remember now. Next week, we're gonna look at, we're gonna do it. And maybe it'll be Hannah, well, I don't know. Hannah would be, my sister Hannah has, comes on the show once a month, you know. It'd be a good, it'd be a good discussion to have with her. And I think I, I think I know how to pipe her in now stuff, which means I think I know how to pipe you in. Yeah, I think we got it so we can have them on the screen. Um, piping in from elsewhere. But I want to talk about, I'm going to do it. Ugly quilts. I'm going to do it. And that is an intense thing to say. And you know, we love all quilts and we love weird quilts. But I found one the other day and I shared it with the bakery. <laughs> I can't call you the bakery. I shared it with Stephanie Cake and Pie and Biscuit. And I mean, that one, that one was... I think what was not only most egregious about that quilt wasn't the fact that it was unpleasant to look at, but that the, I think it was eBay you found it, right? The eBay seller was yes. like totally misrepresented the quilt. Yeah, yeah. They were like, this is retro boho from the 60s. And, and everybody was like, I have that fabric from Joanne's. Like, that's not the case. But it's it's really, really rough. And And I, you know, we love all quilts and a lot of the quilts that we love around here are... I don't know, they're not award winners until like a hundred years later and then they're like the ones everybody wants. But um, they're offbeat, they're different. Our catchphrase is keep quilts weird. We like, you know, we like things that are, we like to see the maker's personality as much as she wanted to or as much as he wanted to put into the quilt. So, but sometimes, so we don't wanna say a quilt is, is ugly, right? Like, oof, that's a judgment call. And it's okay if you're making a judgment. You're like, we love this. But when you're saying something negative, like it's just not my jam, I don't want to do it. But what makes a quilt unsuccessful? You know, design-wise. And I think we should talk about it. So that's what I wanted to say. It was so important. I'm so glad I remembered because that's one of the things we're going to talk about next week on the show. Money and aesthetic problems. <laughs> okay, so this is a detail shot of a quilt by Jane... Cochran, Jane Birch Cochran. Yes, thank you, Mother Nature. I just caught up in the chat and Mother Nature's like, you were saying about quilts that you don't like. I, if only I could keep up better. Sherlock sews, Sherlock sews. It's so good to see you. SJ, you gotta go to work. What are you working the, do you work, do you work the graveyard shift? Do you work in a graveyard? Somehow I feel like it's possible. Um, I'm really glad you came by. Well, we'll be here in an hour. Okay, you don't work in a graveyard. Anyway. Um, let's, oh wow, let's talk about Jane Birch Cochran. So Jane, Jane Birch Cochran, so she is one of the foremothers, I would say, of the art quilt movement, of the art quilt phenomenon. Um, Jane Birch Cochran, I'm gonna read to you, so, so, okay, I'm gonna read to you a little bit from her website. And then we're gonna watch a video. It's five minutes, and it's she was on Wisconsin Public Television some years ago. And we're gonna watch that video together, and we're gonna look at some of these wonderful quilts. And uh, and I also have from this book, which you can get through our affiliate link, our Abe Books affiliate link, the wonderful Sakwa Studio Art Quilt Association uh, Masters One. There's also Masters Two. And she's in the first uh, master's book. And so I'll read to you a few quotes from her and the, the write-up that they have about her. Obviously, she has, um, she, she, her style is heavy embellishment, right? With buttons, buttons, and words, stamped words, uh, beads, and gloves. Gloves are a big part of her practice, her artistic practice. And she is uh, lovely, and, and some of the pictures I'll show you while we kind of go through these, you know, the images here. So some of the things I'll read to you, sorry, as we go through the pictures, um, were pictures taken on the, the trip that Quilt Folk took to Kentucky for issue 12. And I, you know, I, I, I don't do Quilt Folk content 
often, you know, I, when I have pictures that are relevant, I show some of them. But, you know, this show is not affiliated with Quilt Folk. You know, I, I'm not the editor at that magazine anymore. Um, I step down to do other things. <laughs> and, um, but I still work with Quilt Folk. Anyway, anyway, but I have some pictures from that shoot, um, just a few to show you, because they're so good, and they really give you a sense of Jane. Um, and she, yes, she lives in Kentucky, and let's, let's learn a little bit about her as we look at some of these pieces. So this is from her website. Quote, in my art quilts, I try to combine my art training in painting, my love of fabric, and the tradition of American quilting. I combine, sorry, by the way, this is called, and I was the only one left. And I was the only one left. And it says down here, I miss my grandmother, right? It's very emotional kind of work. I mean, she's vulnerable, right, in her work. Um, this quilt, this is called Apron Memories. It's 44 by 49. Lots of aprons in her work, clothing. Back to Jane. I unconsciously combine the loose, free feeling of abstract painting with the time-consuming and controlled techniques of sewing and beading. I started making small bead and fabric collages in 1978. The first fabrics I used were painted canvas and my father's neckties. The first large quilt I made was in 1985, and I have been completely obsessed with making art quilts since then. Quilts both large and small, but always for the wall. In June 2004, I completed a quilt for the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. Seven, seven by 10 feet. Wow, wait a minute. Kate, can you look for a picture of that? Can you look for Jane Birch Cochran Underground Railroad Freedom Center? It's the National okay. Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati, Ohio. I mean, you know, this is a, this is a exploration, not a presentation, so I didn't, I didn't read that. So let's see. Let's see if, if uh, there's a picture of that. I would like to see it. So uh, beautiful, right? Beautiful, beautiful. So actually, I'm going to jump ahead to one of the pictures from Quilt Folk because, I mean, look at Jane. She's so great. And this is her in her studio. And I mean, the pictures of her of her studio and, and the, her work, I mean, there's just jars of beads everywhere and wonderful. Look, she's fussy cutting, right? She's fussy cutting, you know, these flowers. I mean, I think that's a K facet flower, don't you think? That's what it looks like to me. Or Brandon Mabley or something like that. But the, the work, the fine bead work is so cool. And look how she has the ears of corn. I don't know. She, to, I think she's... I mean, it doesn't get much better than her in terms of art quilting. And I'm, I mean, the art quilt world agrees because she's, you know, she really pushed the art form. She pushed the quilt as art early, early. I mean, she was, I, start, I started making small bead and fabric collages in 78. You know, the first fabrics I used were painted canvas and my father's neckties. And then she made her first large quilt in 1978. Look at this one. This is great. Wait, wait, hold on. So that's Jane, and she's amazing. Um, but look at this, look at this work with the dress. Hang on, I'll scoot over. It's a great picture by Azuri Watala, by the way. Nope, person I gave a quilt to recently, Azuri and Trevor for their wedding. Anyway, um, Jane says, did I, what's going on here? Hang on, oh no, no, okay. I'm gonna get rid of me because I want you to see that. Hang on. Boop. Nope, not that. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Jane says, I have been fortunate to be a full-time artist since 1980. Once I had more time to spend on my work, instead of making more quilts, I made quilts that took more time. I love doing labor-intensive artwork. It is an odyssey. Oh, I love her. After working several months on a quilt, uh, if I don't think it's working, then I must not cast it aside, but quote unquote, fix it. I often do this by building up and adding more embellishments and paint rather than taking it apart. I do have patience and a vision, which keeps me going. 
People often ask me where I get my ideas. Oh, look at that. God. Um, mm -hmm. For me, that is the easiest part. As most artists do, I love to observe people, nature, and the universe in general, and ponder. This can be a blessing and a curse, but I try to accept it as a blessing. Amazing. And here, well, let's watch the video. Let's watch the video. Let's do that. Let's watch that um, together. And recording stopped. Oh, well, the, the I same. wasn't going to record a video. That oh, right. oh, that's a good idea. That's smart. Very, very, very smart. Um, the YouTubies will they will come and get us. Okay. Uh, here's this. Great. Nope. That's almost what we want, but not quite. And here it is. Yep. Great. Okay, Jane Birch Cochran, and this is from, um, hmm, I don't know the year, but it's from Wisconsin Public Television a few years ago, and it's from The Art of Quilting. And so it was a series about art quilting um, from, yeah, Wisconsin Public Television. And this is all about Jane Birch Cochran. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's do it. Hear from her, right? Jane Cochran is someone whom I have admired for many, many, many years because her work transcends and, and transitions from the classic quilts. You can see the connection with the Victorian crazy quilts in oh, her work. In yeah, I didn't think about that. Oh my God, that's so true with the gloves and the lace and stuff and the buttons. Wow, good call. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it terms of the embellishment with the buttons, the embroidery, mm -hmm. and at the same time, you realize the content, you realize that she may in fact have some some photo transfer, some surface design. So she is a perfect example of someone who is taking the finest of the traditions and oh. building on them to create new traditions. People send me stuff. So someone sent me a pair of gloves and I think, well, I'll never use that. And then it's there in the back of your mind and eventually you do use it. And then people see the gloves and now I have boxes of gloves that people send me. <laughs> I reached a point too where I, I decided, okay, I can either stop using the gloves. Oh, look at the ladybugs on my fingers. So good, so creative, I love it. There's just jars of beads and bowls of beads all over her house. It's great. Or I can push the gloves. And I opted for pushing it. One thing I like to use a lot are fortunes from fortune cookies. Back in the day when I did my husband's laundry, he has now taken that over. One of the benefits, maybe the only benefits, would be change I would find in his pocket and fortunes, because he ate at a lot of Chinese restaurants. So I started saving fortunes. I use my grandmother's paintbrush uh, and a paint Really quick, sorry. I want to know, is that, so is she doing photo transfer? What is up with this? Does anybody know? I know Susan's here, different art quilters are here. Um, is that like a photo transfer situation? Because that's not the actual thing, right? Lulu, what are you up to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, oh, Lady K, by the way, I'm having um, my favorite sea salt and vinegar crisps. Oh, oh my God. Wait a minute, but I, oh, Lady K, did she do the, the, the crisp? Did she do the- did, did you have cheese puffs the other day? No, I did not have them. I will oh. get cheese puffs. Oh my goodness, I lied. I thought you were eating cheese no, puffs the other no, day. No, no, I was not, I was not. I talked about how I needed to get cheese. Lady K, it was her, right? It was, it was, it was Lady K. It was her. On the next show, on Tuesday night, I will be eating cheese puffs because you asked me to, and I will be doing it. I promise you. Damn. Okay, I will. I will, okay. But good call asking me. Okay, anyway, so this is photo transfer, right? Is that photo transfer? Yeah, Quiltish says, yeah, photo transfer. Robin's like, yep, mm-hmm, yep, yep, yep. Laminated and stitched, interesting. Scanned and printed, okay, cool. Hey, Rock Dog. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> okay, good. All right. This would be change I would find in his pocket and 
fortunes because he ate at a lot of Chinese restaurants. So I started saving fortunes. I used my grandmother's paintbrush uh, in a piece. Uh, I've used my other grandmother's hospital service pen. I have some things like that. And people always say, well, how can you ever sell a quilt with that treasure in it? And mm. I just say, well, you know, I've, I've put it there and I can pass it on now. That That's not really hard for me. Mm. Because as you can see, I have tons of stuff and I got to get, I've got to get rid of it in some way. Hmm. So maybe that's how it lives on. This is the 11th in a series of pieces made from handkerchiefs and they're all 18 inches square. The idea with the handkerchief is the ideas all came from things that might make you cry, either happy or sad, or hot peppers. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, God. <gasps> I also like the idea of things being hidden, and I've done work before. Wait a minute. There are things that can make you cry, and you don't know if it's happy or sad? That's so brilliant. And now yeah, pronounce your husband, like, wow. Mm -hmm. We gotta support Hot peppers. Our... Hot peppers. Someone you love leaving you. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> That's complicated. Um, it's We gotta support our artists, you know? I wanna be filthy rich one day, right? It's just so I can give scholarships and just give money. We gotta support these artists, ma'am. I mean, we gotta do it. They, we need them so bad. Before we put things in Not pot. that Jane Birch Cochran needs a scholarship. I'm just saying, like, look at this. My heart is sick and sad from where the sun now stands. I will fight no more forever. Chief Joseph. She does a lot of Native American iconography. There's one quilt she has called Half Breed that I feel is very personal to her. So so this, this is a recurring theme for her. It's, so maybe I like the idea that you're not supposed to touch a quilt, but you have to touch this one. Mm. You now breaking some of those rules. Because when you think about quilts, they were made to touch. They were made to sleep wow. under. Wow. You know, and mine aren't necessarily that more fragile. You don't want to wash them in a washing machine, and you probably don't want to sleep under because of the weight of the buttons, but they're not as fragile as you might think. Mm. Rarely do I think I've used too much, uh, I must say. I've, in fact, I keep working more and more towards just as encrusted and as embellished as it possibly can be. Mm. You know, kind of. The, it's the more is more approach. I say primarily it's about patience and a vision. Mm. And it's not that it's really difficult. Uh, something far more difficult to me would be uh, doing a traditional square and making all the pieces match. You know, I think that takes a lot of ability and sewing ability. It's good for a person if you have this a mind that just won't ever shut up and all this dumb stuff is floating around in it all the time. Same. It's really a good release. It's my sanity, <laughs> in case you hadn't figured that out. Hmm. But maybe I just feel freer, you know? Maybe I, I see these little beads. I'm not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of beads. I'm not even afraid of spilling Look beads all over the floor. A lot of people, when they bead, they'll have you know, a little screw jar of blue beads and a little screw jar of yellow beads. And then when you finish with the blue beads, put the blue beads back. But I like a hodgepodge. Ugh. Also, I just hate to put stuff away. So <laughs> say I'm I can, using I, green beads, but then I need some blue beads. So I'll throw those in. But say while I'm sewing, I'm tired of using green beads. You know, even going around something. So I'll <laughs> wait a minute. Blue wait, did you see and her? I can just make my moment. Sorry, that was adorable. Wait, I'm sorry. Just look at her size. She's like, oh. she gets bored. This is why I like scrap quilts. I get bored with the same fabric. I gotta change, or I'm gonna stop. Look at her size. It's so sweet. Say while I'm sewing, I'm tired of using green beads. You know, even going around <laughs> something. So I'll throw in a blue one. And that can just make my moment mm. to just change a little bit. But um, I will just try to keep doing what I'm doing. And it still seems to interest me and keep me going. And I have a lot of ideas still in that realm. So, you know, I've kind of found a little hook over here and I'll just stay there. And you know, hopefully, you know, for as long as I've left. Wow. I mean, <clears throat> 
So th I just want to go back. I want to tap it back to this. It's my yeah, this, this right here. Hold on. It's a ability. It's good this, for This, this right here. Okay. Like, to be good at something, they talk about 10,000 hours. You have to do 10,000 hours. And I heard somebody was like, that's not true. But, like, to make the work that she makes, just, like, Saturday night out there. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a nice night. Everybody's out. You might hear some music. Anyway, um, so, so but, but, but like, every bead. She doesn't have, she, it's not a studio model with Jane Cochran, right? She's, she's doing it all herself, as far as I know. And, like, every bead. Every bead Person and every, every stitch. It, it just the hours and hours and hours that it takes. Look, every bead. To me, I, I just, it's it, amazing to me. It's amazing. Any quilter who makes something so intricate, so so detailed, I'm, I'm just blown away, you know? And look this, this bowl of beads. Anyway, I think she's great. I think she's great. Um, I feel like <laughs> Mother Nature, first class Girl Scout badge with beads. That is impressive. I am impressed. Indeed. Let's take a look at a few more of her pieces while I read to you just this brief thing. Um, there's Jane today. I think it well, this would be two years ago. Um, this is from the master's book. I'll just read to you what someone else says about her, right? We've heard from her in the video. We heard from her in her, from her website. And this is what Sakwa writes about her. Gloves may be what Jane Birch Cochran is best known for. Look at this work. It's so good. Gloves appear in almost every piece she makes. For her, they represent hands, quote, reaching and searching for questions about the human psyche, unquote. And they also perform more prosaic functions, holding things or reaching into pockets. Uh, and sometimes they become angel wings, blackbirds, dresses, moons and hidden pockets and other recurring images in her work heavily embellished with found objects, beads, buttons, yo-yos, and paint. Cochrane's work develops intuitively as she adds layer upon layer of applique and embellishment to her freeform strip-pieced patchwork base. Strip-pieced, interesting, interesting, interesting. Hey, it's okay. Um, Cochrane describes herself as part moon chaser part gypsy butterfly, and part pearly queen after the cockney costumes covered in buttons. Interesting. Her recent work explores our complex relationships with food, while a new series is inspired by her trips to Mexico for Dia de los Muertos. Interesting. We saw one of the Dia, Dia de los Muertos um, skulls, right, in, in the video, I think. Um, this is great, just this one. I don't know if I have a name for it, but the clothes and things. I mean, very interesting. Here's a quote from Jane. Quote, in my art quilts, I try to combine my training uh, in painting, my love of fabric, and traditional American quilting. Um, this may be a quote from, um, I unconsciously combine the loose, free feeling of abstract painting with the time-consuming and controlled techniques of sewing and beading. Is that a thing in a pocket? She's got a it's a thing in a pocket. Patch. Oh my! It, Is it a have... patch or something? I we... know Mother Nature. I think saw some uh, uh, scouting patches. So I don't know if that is one or if that's some other kind of. Are you saying that we have a pocket? So it, it's a shirt, right? And there's a pocket. It's a shirt and there's a pocket. I. And then there's a thing in the pocket. Did An you arrow. say there's a thing in the pocket? Yeah. It's been months since we did that. Look, look, if there's a pocket, I'm gonna wee, wee, Dorothy, I hope you're watching. Wee, it's getting late, it's getting late. You gotta go to bed, girl. But I do like to get into pockets. I'm just saying you might be a fan of this show for the rest of your life. Okay, um, so so yeah, so Jane Birch Cochran, I, I urge you to look for her work, look around. And you know, I've mentioned it a couple times on the show because it keeps coming up, which I think is significant. 
There were buttons on a quilt at QuiltCon, a winning quilt at QuiltCon this year. There were buttons on that quilt. And there were buttons on another one that I saw at QuiltCon. So like, I mean, that's, this is like, it's a big deal to me because the modern minimalist style, it ain't got buttons on it. So what's going on? What's going on, people? This is called War Baby, 64 by 49. Beautiful. There's some food, right? Strawberries and things. So I hope you are, Susan or Michael, I hate yo-yos, but I love that quilt. Same, same. Rubber stamped letters. Yep, yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Rubber stamps. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you can kind of see, like, I remember those stamps, like that style of stamp. So I think the ones that involve those stamps, at least at some point, were kind of like in the 90s, right? Kind of made in the 90s. I just remember that that kind of stamp. The other Mary Kate! Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, here we go. The other Mary Kate? I wanna party with you. When are we gonna party? You gotta come to Chicago. Oh yeah, and by the way, the invitation is open. Hey, Raffle. The invitation is open. Molly, anybody who comes to Chicago, well, in our community, um, you're on the show. If you wanna be on the show, you come on the show. It's a standing invitation. If I know you in the chat, if you're in the lurker lunch, you're gonna have to get in the chat. Cause I can't just like, you can't just be some rando and be like, oh, I watch your show, I'm in the lurker lunch. Like you could just drop by one time and be like, can I be on your show? I don't know why it's a dude who's saying that. <laughs> but if you're a nerd and you wanna come on the show, I have got room for you. I have got room for you. I mean, you heard that, Bonnie, right? I was right when I said yes. Listen, I heard Bonnie maybe was going to come through Chicago. Are you kidding me? Bonnie, if you were on... Oh, forget it. Get, get, get over here. Yvonne, I got my eyes on you. You know I do. Okay. So, we're not going to take a break. We're not going to take a break tonight. We're not going to do it. We're going to go straight into the thing. Actually, actually, no. For a palette cleanser, here's what we're going to do. Robin bought a notebook. This is this is the this is the uh, little moment before the second half of the show. Sometimes I just gotta go, cake. Sometimes I just gotta I just gotta go. I, I got so much energy, I can't stop. Okay, that um, is fine. I, I'm energy free, so it's good. <laughs> good, good. Oh yeah, you were with you were you were hanging out. You visited family. You you drove. You know. Yes, it was a party weekend with IWC quilts. So yes, we're both tired. Right. IWC quilts. I love you. I've never met you, but you're Stephanie's mom, so I love you. Um, so anyway, so so Steph, I've got the energy for us both. And uh, yeah, there's there's Quilt Nerd merch, you know? And if you're new here and you're like, why does that look weird? It's because in the 19th century, we can, we're can we gonna always be looking for more quilts that have the backwards end. But a lot of these wonderful old quilts, if there were words on the quilts, randomly, sometimes the N is reversed. Why? Nobody really knows. There's theories. The coolest thing about it is that nobody knows for sure. There's not like diaries, you know, where women or men you know, are like, today I made a quilt with the reversed end. Ha 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 ha. And here's why. You know, like we don't know. But, um, but it's just so perfect. And it was on this very show that we figured out that the logo for Quilt Nerd needed to include a backwards end. So you can get a notebook. Isn't that great? You can also get a tote bag. Keep quilts weird. This is before we had the official logo, so that is my janky but charming version of um, the Quilt Nerd logo. And uh, I have this tote bag. I use it every day. It's very sturdy, and I like it a lot. Stephanie Cake, would you throw? You probably already have thrown the link in there, or if you if you haven't, if you would throw it in, that'd be great. Um, we work with a company here in Chicago. Everything's print on demand, and it's a local company, and it's great, and we like it. Who knows where merch will go from here, but uh, Poison Green, for anybody who's a quilt nerd, you know what that means. It's a fabric. But Poison Green also sounds like a superhero, like a supervillain. So you could wear that and be cool with your Comic-Con friends. Um, stickers, magnets. Look, this is a sticker and a magnet. Oh, bad at commercials, but look at that, look. And Threadless is so great, they even put it on a file folder <laughs> to show you what it looks like, but yeah. Keep quilts weird. Uh, and yeah, turkey red. Get your hoodie. It's getting cold out there. I mean, it's getting chilly. How cool will you be if you have a turkey red sweatshirt? Okay. 
Um, so there you go. There's the station identification. Let's talk about quilt frames. Um, I have not, I don't know. I've never really thought about them deeply. I've never really looked at, this is not a fun picture. Let's go to a, a better picture and then come back to the schematic. Um, I pulled up a few, you know, pictures of people quilting on quilt frames just to sort of, you know, have some visuals here. We're going to talk about quilt frames. And actually, there's a video. I don't know. I think I'm going to do it. We we talked about Joe Cunningham last week. We watched a video by Joe Cunningham last week. And I was like, I can't show another video by him. That's weird, right? But he does a video on quilt frames, and it's really good. He's really awesome. He's really awesome. Mean... We're going to have to watch it. we got to watch it. Joe, I... I you know, and I have to see him next week at AQSG. And I'll be like, well, he doesn't, I don't, he doesn't watch yet. He doesn't watch yet. Just because I haven't talked, I mean, he might. I, he might. Listen, that's another thing. If you have somebody in your life that you think would like this show, please tell them. And be like, Twitch is fine. Like, don't worry about it. Mary just can't conform to YouTube. She can't do it. You don't conform either. Don't conform. Don't conform. Just don't. You don't have to. Anyway, so, um, but bring a friend. This is the best thing. This is the best thing. Anyway, so I'll, I'll bring a friend and Joe will be in the chat and you'll be like, I was watching Quilt Nerd before Joe Cunningham was even tuning in. <laughs> and then he was there and we're all friends now. Anyway, so we'll watch him. Okay, we'll watch him. But until then, um, as I looked at these pictures of people quilting on frames, I was surprised at how many chairs Chairs, they've got this thing set up on chairs, these girls. This is from the Library of Congress. I don't know when it would be. I'm not sure totally what year that would be. Um, it's definitely in the 19th century, definitely. Um, they're little bows. Um, this is later. This is definitely later, probably in the 50s, 60s, early 60s maybe. So these women, look, there's also chairs holding up this frame. Right? Oh, I'm a little bit big. Let me get a little smaller. Sorry, guys. Okay, I should be smaller. Um, yeah, so, so and this is, I mean, to me, it, it's definitely a church basement. I could be wrong. It might be a school. The wooden floor, maybe school. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I didn't go to church a lot, but they were linoleum floors when I was a kid. Um, but here they are. They're quilting. Actually, they're tying it, aren't they? They're not quilting it. They're tying it. How interesting. Hmm. I mean, when's the last time? This is, I love, I, I, I love the tying. I grew up in a world where, I mean, did you ever see a Fonz and Porter quilt tied? Now, actually in the Quilter's Complete Guide by Marianne Fonz and Liz Porter, one of the best-selling quilt books of all time, um, there is instructions on everything. And when I tied a quilt for the first time, where did I go? I did not go to the internet. I pulled out the Quilter's Complete Guide because books are actually the most efficient thing. If you've got a good, a good set of books on how to. The Quilter's Complete Guide by Mom and Liz, it's chef's kiss. It's so good. And it's faster than the internet, I maintain, because you can go to the index and be like, needle turned applique or tying a quilt. Go to the index, go to the page, and you know you have really good information. Whereas the internet, I mean, it's a crack up, you know? Like, wh what are you gonna get? Who's your source? There's so many sources. One person tells you to do it one way, another person tells you to do it another way. So Mom and Liz have tying quilt instructions in their book, okay? But like, I was on the show, right? Mom did the show for a long time. Mom shows up in the show a lot of times. Hey, Kitty Hannah. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't know that she, that she, um, if she, if she's in here, I don't think she, hey, Caitlin, um, did you ever do a, a tie a, a quilt on Fonson and Porter's love of quilting on public television? I don't think so. I would have loved it. I didn't know any better at the time when I was doing it. I would have loved to do it. Um, so, you know. It was like verboten, you know? It just wasn't done. It wasn't done to tie a quilt when I was coming up. But it's so great. It's so cool. I just love it so much, right? Okay, here's another. I gotta be honest, yeah. I like a tied quilt because I'm not a, I don't love quilting, I like piecing. Me neither. I like piecing and I like a warm quilt and I have to say these quilts that are quilted heavily 
They're beautiful. They're beautiful. They're so beautiful. It's just a different thing. And a heavily quilted quilt can be warm. That's not what I'm saying. But like those, those tied quilts, you know, they're kind of foofy. Sometimes they're kind of like janky. <laughs> I like that too. But yeah, I mean, you sometimes don't want to put them in the washing machine as evidenced by the first quilt I ever made. Sometimes you don't want to touch them. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, they're just, I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so, but, but to me, like the beautifully quilted quilt, that is a thing that I love and like admire. And then the tied quilt is a thing that I like love and admire. You know what I mean? It's just a different thing. This is kind of a, this is a picture you see a lot, but look at that chairs. It's set up on chairs. They, they are not, that's not some fancy thing. Now, however, I mean, yes and. Now then, I, I was looking at this. I was looking at the Mountain Artisans book, okay? Mountain Artisans were, it was a collective in the late 1960s, very late 1960s, into the, um, the 70s, and they did fashion. We talked about the Mountain Artisans long ago. I was in London. I didn't even have my book at the time. So we, we're going to revisit the Mountain Artisans. I'm fascinated by them. A, a group of women in West Virginia who were working with like this sort of fashion stuff. I mean, they were they sold fabric to Yves Saint Laurent. I mean, like it's fascinating, fascinating stuff. So in the book that we'll look at it at some point, they show setting up a quilt frame, and they have this series of pictures of these women women setting up. A, you know a proper a proper frame and they have the clothes or the clothes horses they have the not rocking horses help me stephanie what are, horses. thank you thank you thank you so much um dorothy that's for you she's probably so t she's asleep dorothy you're asleep you're eight you had cotton candy hot dogs a boat ride, you went to Willis Tower, you're asleep. But I play this for you anyway. Okay. So so these women are setting this up. And yeah, yeah, saw horses. And you see there, so they, they hook the quilt. I mean, they, you know, set the quilt on the frame. They roll it to some extent. I mean, and then they stretch it out. Look at this hair. Oh my God, I love this hair. Oh. And, um, and that's a very interesting series of, of photographs, right? Because they really, I think there's one more. Yeah, and now they have the quilt ready for quilting. So these are on actual sawhorses, but so many of the, of the pictures I found were, were on chairs. And I, I just thought that was kind of crazy. Um, here's one more. Let's see, is there one more? Yeah, so this is from the Library of Congress, too. Um, people quilting standing up using surplus commodity cotton, Greensboro, Alabama. Alabama, Greensboro, Alabama, right? Alabama. Uh, 1941. Uh, though not as common as seated quilters, quilting while standing up is the practice among yeah among some Georgians. Photo courtesy of the Library of Congress. Um, so this this is fascinating, right? Because you do usually in these pictures, the ones I just showed you, you know, people are sitting quilting. Well, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. Well, these girls are standing, by the way, and also, hello. They're standing too. And when we watched that video, that um, when we were the uh, Appalachia, the the one um, Apple Shop or Apple Apple Chat, why? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know my words tonight. But it was so fascinating, and I was in I was completely entranced. I mean, I could not stop that video for anything, because I was like, oh my god, quilting bees and sewing bees. We're not like some like staid, like formal affair. It was like, oh, I'm quilting on the quilting bee. It was just like folks came through and took took some stitches, you know, and people haven't changed, you know, so somebody was having a beer and it was like, oh, you know, Bernadette, you know, she's off her skis, she's whatever. And, you know, she don't let her take any more stitches. I mean, it was just very, the way it was on that video we watched, it was just very casual, it was very cool. And so, you know, once again, I'm faced with this reality, which is that nothing is what we think. You know, everything gets codified, it gets sort of, you know, you tell the story again and again and again, and it becomes true, but really, you know, quilting bees, yeah, okay, a lot of people stand up. Oh, interesting, okay. Quilting bees, you know, it's not like, like people aren't doing dances and playing the fiddle. You know what I mean? Like maybe they did, and they did sometimes, but not everybody. And I love that because it makes it more human. It makes it more human. Oh, ooh, that's good. Stephanie Cake, talk about this book while I get the video pulled up. I'm gonna get the video pulled up. 
So I imagine IWC Quilts is still here, being my mother. If I you hope guys so. Have it noticed that IWC Quilts is my mother. Um, I I, uh, I was rude and took like a many many books from her bookshelves this weekend. Excellent. <laughs> and it was so funny. She has one, and it's a Schiffer book. It's by Sue Reich, and it's called oh, Quiltings, yeah. Frolics, and Bees: mm-hmm. One Hundred Years of Signature Quilts. And it's a really great book. And I'll uh, if we don't have a link for it, I'll, I'll make a link for it because it, it's a very good book. I don't think we have um, a link it, for it. You get you yeah. Know. It's a it's about signature quilts specifically, mm-hmm. which are a really interesting, great topic, and I think it's covered very well. Mm-hmm. But I looked at the title of it, and I remember we talked about quilting bees recently, <laughs> and made fun of the whole concept of the bee or the frolic and I was like oh geez yeah the frolic the frolic and I mean I just recently read a story it was very old by a person who was actually against it was a prohibition kind of thing or he wrote books about it later I forget his name but he wrote a, a very famous story called the quilting party and it's all about like did she look my way and you know like oh who will she favor at the quilting party? And I was like, uh, it wasn't my jam, but it was, a, you know, so, so yeah. The, the lesson or right, whatever is still the same. People are different. Folks do different stuff, but they're just people. I don't know, in the past, it's just, I don't know. People just, they don't seem real in the past, but like people just like drink. Um, let's just, well, Dorothy's watching. Men and women, and folks, all kinds of folks, do all kinds of things together, and they have fun, and they work. I mean, like, nothing's changed. Nothing is really that different. Anyway, so I just like that, and, and quilts actually remind me of that a lot, you know, because it's just, it's human nature, and it's material culture, and it's so much fun. So we're going to watch this video. I got it pulled up, but the one thing I'll show you first is this schematic, probably... I think, is it the first schematic we've ever seen on this show? Perhaps, perhaps. But this is from the Georgia book, and it's one of my favorite books in my library. It's so good. We've talked about it a lot. I mean, it comes up a lot because it's just like, it's amazing. And this is, uh, they talk about, they talk about frames um, <clears throat> in the Georgia book. Um, and I'm going to read just a little. It says, um, quote, a bed size quilt proved a challenge when it came to Uh, Quilting. Most quilters use some kind of frame to hold the three layers in place. So these are different kinds of frames. Okay, let's look at this one. This is the adjustable frame. I'll I'll hide myself. Let me get rid of myself. I want to get rid of myself. (laughs) Tell me about it. Um, Okay. Um, Most... That's for you, Dorothy. Okay. Most uh, quilters use some kind of frame to hold the quilt, uh, the three layers in place. It could be as simple as four narrow beans... Uh, boards or even slivers, quote unquote slivers, the throwaway strips salvaged at the sawmill. Wow. These four narrow boards might have holes bored in them. Okay, we can see that, right? Holes bored in them for a long nail to connect them. Oh, wow. At each corner to hold them in a square. Some quilters used four C clamps for this purpose. The quilt's lining could be fastened to the boards by sewing through a series of holes along the lengths of the boards. Held in place by rows of headless tacks, nailed into the boards. Okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay. Many, uh, many quilt frames were attached by rope or sturdy cord to four ceiling, oh yeah, to four ceiling hooks that allowed for the frame to be raised out of the way for storage. We see that, we see that a lot. That's, that was very common. Because like, where do you put it, you know? Thoughtful quilters were careful not to rock the frame and cause a fellow quilter to misstitch or prick her fingers. Oh my, can you imagine? It's like, you know, Betty, Mary, stop rocking the frame. Oh, like. I can imagine on those that are hanging from the ceiling, that would be so easy to do. Oh yeah. You know, I mean, you would have to be really good at what you're doing to keep it like really stable. Totally, totally. Like that would be, that would be a challenge, especially if you're having fun. Um, other quilters, oh wow, oh my gosh. So they didn't want to rock the frame to cause a fellow to, to misstitch or prick her finger, resulting in blood on the quilt. Mm. Blood on the quilt. Do we need that on a shirt? I don't know. Mm, maybe not. Um, <laughs> it's great though. Um, and we cry 
when we make quilts too, because we screw up a lot. So blood, sweat, and tears. Because it's hard. You're poking yourself with sharp things and it doesn't always go right, so you cry. Okay. Yeah. Um, more sophisticated freestanding quilt frames were the work of furniture makers or woodworkers. Various designs were used to roll the quilt and support the carefully crafted frame. The number of rollers varied and the techniques for stabilizing the quilt after each roll took various forms. Okay, all right. So that's, I mean, the schematic is, you know, this is great. It's in, the, it's in the Georgia book. If you don't have the Georgia book, you gotta get it. It's, it's just one of the best. I mean, it's great. Okay, so let's watch Joe Cunningham because he's more entertaining than me, at least tonight. <laughs> No, I'm whatever. Um, where am I? Where am I with this? I am here and I am doing this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. The quilt report. This one is four minutes and 18 seconds. And then I think there's a part two, which is about the same, about the same um, length. Okay, let's check it out. Joe, I didn't know that we were gonna look at your videos twice in a week, but we are. He's got them on chairs. Well, uh, there were long arm machines for a long, long time. They went away back, but they didn't get popular until, you know, the late 80s, early 90s uh, of the last century. So um, before that, almost all quilts uh, were quilted by hand. And the technology that was used was almost unchanged from the Middle Ages when they would have tapestry uh, frames, mm. just four sticks with fabric attached to them, somehow held together at the corners. That's all there is to it. You need something to hold them up in the air. And I have my fancy quilt legs that I've made with over $8 worth of material. Wow. Uh, and about a half hour of work. Um, but also, you can just use chairs, your sofa a table uh, to hold up a corner. You don't have to have anything fancy at all, just four sticks and some way to hold them together at the corners. I use these C clamps C -clamp. uh, that uh, uh, do just fine. Uh, I uh, work with quilters who nail the corners together. Did we just read about it or did we just read about it? I'm just saying, the Quilt Nerd Show, you'll be like, hey, Joe Cunningham, Let's talk about quilt frames. You'd be like, you know, the C-clamps and the nails. He'll be like, very good. I know. I like your scarf. And unnailed them when they needed to roll. I've uh, worked with people that use wooden pegs uh, to do holes. There was a series of holes in the wire boards for me that I have. And they would uh, match the peg to the hole to the closest one, closest thing. So the way you reach the middle, as you'll see, as I go along and quilt this quilt, is you get you start at the outside edge and you quilt towards the middle and you keep rolling up the finish part until you can reach the whole thing. That's all there is to it, and I'm going to be uh, installing the quilt in there today. What our grandmothers called uh, putting in. Today I'm putting, putting in. Putting in. I'm just whip stitching these uh, two the the backing fabric. I made it a couple inches bigger all the way around. Wait a minute. The top. Wait a minute. He's stitching it to the frame. Okay, I didn't totally get that. I didn't get There's that. There's like a strip of fabric or something. Um, or wonder if it's yeah. like a type of like a, I don't know, like a tape that's stapled or nailed to that, that lat, that yeah. flat. Yeah, it looks. And so he's stitching the quilt to that. Wow. Okay, I missed that. That's amazing. I didn't know that. Wow. And the fabric that's attached to right, the Right, Kitty? It's the leader, I'm sorry. Staples. The leader. I just stapled it every couple of inches all the way along. So, uh, you, hmm. like I keep saying, you can pin. You don't have to uh, hand sew. But one of the reasons I'm into quilts is because of the hand sewing. It's one of my favorite parts. Whenever I can insert that into the process, I do. Here's my thing. Just whip stitching. Wow. Round, round, round. 
Wow, okay. So I sew it to two of the boards, the two end ones, and then I pin it all the way along each side. I'll have to take those pins out as hmm. I roll the, so I get the quilt done and I roll it up towards the middle. Anyone who's like a minimalist or like whatever, it's like, are you quilting? Because you really should. You know, it's like, it's so beautiful. It's just so simple and wonderful. Then I have a batting that I unroll and put that on top, to smooth it out. Now, if you've seen me in action before, you know, I'm pretty much like a monkey with a stick. Oh my God. how I do things that I can't reach. So I smooth it out. Interesting. As much as I need to. Just like that. Once I have it all smoothed out, then I just go all the way around the edge and uh, pin the very perimeter of it, uh, of the quilt top, through the batting and the backing. Then I'm all ready to sit down and quilt. You know, this guy's been doing this for a long time. Like, the 70s for sure. But like, yeah. this guy's is great, you know? Joe Cunningham's great. Mm-hmm, yeah, there's a second part we have to watch. It's great. Okay, um, I'll pull up the second half. It's interesting, isn't it? I'm so glad he did this. I'm so glad he did this, because now he sits down and he quilts. Yeah, 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 yep, 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 yep. Okay, and and I have to do all the YouTube things. You gotta go to Joe the Quilter Cunningham. I'm gonna like this video. I've already subscribed to him. Oh, not with this account. Okay, so I've subscribed to him twice. <laughs> You got a Joe Cunningham the Quilter. Sorry, Joe the Quilter Cunningham. Please go to his channel, like his videos. Anything you watch that you like, like it. Hit that like button. It makes all the difference. Like the video, subscribe. He's great content. He's great. You gotta watch his stuff. You really do. And subscribe and do all the things. Okay. Let's see what he has to say in the second half. It's the same with about four minutes and thirty seconds. Okay, here we go. Now he's gonna quilt. Um Yes, yes, yeah, mom and I did. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. Sarah, Sarah's watching. Sarah, Sarah's, Dorothy, Dorothy. Oh my God, okay. Dorothy, this is for you. This is your shout out. I can't believe you're still awake. This is for you, my dear. That's your shout out. And now that I know you're here for sure, I'm gonna do it more. Um, you're amazing, I'm so glad I got to see you today. And Sarah, I love you so much. Okay, okay, we're, now we're gonna watch this video about this guy and he's quilting in a frame. And he made it out of boards. Just, I mean, Sarah, you could make a quilting frame out of what's in your hotel room right now. You're that smart and good with things. Okay, let's see what he has to say. Hi, it's Joe. Welcome to the Quilt Report. Well, uh, I've got a whole bunch of this quilted on this side and on that side. It's time to roll. It's time for me to roll up uh, what I have quilted and get to the middle so that I can uh, uh, get all the way there. That's the most confusing part about the old-fashioned quilting frame, the way all quilts were done in the 1800s, is that you quilt from the outside in. Somehow in the 20th century, the yeah. idea arose that uh, you have to quilt from the inside out because otherwise you would have wrinkles and fullness in there. Um, that's not true. Uh, all quilts used to be, and many quilts still are, quilted from the outside in. Okay. Uh, this is the way it was all. I've never, I mean, that, I had, I saw this a while ago, right? But, um, yeah, I've always, always been told, start in the middle and go out to the edges. Stephanie Cake, is that true for you? Always start in the middle? Yes, be yes, and go outwards, because if you try to go inwards you're gonna end up with a bunchy weird mess in the middle yeah and he's saying no that's a new thing interesting now our long armor's in the house Yvonne if you're still around I mean the long armor's you know but the, but the thing is the long arm machine is a totally different thing I mean this is like it's like it's a completely different tool so really they're not comparable and the long armor's they know what they're doing right so okay let's see what he has to say and let's watch him quilt right always done uh, and the reason you don't have fullness is because the quilt all three layers are held taut from the very beginning of the process it's like a trampoline 
and there's no fullness to the oh, other. Yeah, okay. And so all, you don't have to worry. There's not even, you don't even have to baste. You just sit down and start quilting. Really? Uh, and so it's a, a glory to me of the old fashioned frame. Is uh, the quilt sitting here? I can just sit down and go to work. I don't have to. Wow. Have to, a lot of people used to hang them from the ceiling instead of having legs like this. Uh, and that works too, of course. Interesting. But the principles of the frame are the same no matter how it's suspended in the air for you to sit down and quilt comfortably at. Uh, okay, you need to roll it towards the middle. So that means I have to, I've removed the pins that were pinning this to the board. So now I just take off one clam. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Take off the other clam. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, try to do it straight and I roll the uh, finished part up as far as I have it quilted and then reclam. It's that simple. Try to keep it tight. So he said he's not basting at all. Here's a question. I actually don't know. It's been a while since I was at a long arm machine. I mean, I've played around on one. But gee, really dumb question. Hey, RPS Sherry. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. And this is for Dorothy. Um, do you baste a uh, long arm? When you're loading a quilt onto a long arm machine, is there any basting that happens? That's probably, I can't believe I don't know that, but I don't, no, I don't, I don't know. Okay, well, I will qualify this by saying my long arm situation is actually a frame with a industrial machine. Like it's the, it's, it's an attachment for industrial machine. Really? I do not, and I don't think you're supposed to because they have rollers that hold yeah. everything like smooth and tight. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if Ivana is here tonight, but. She was, she was, I don't know if she's here right now. She's our. She's our person for sure on that. I mean, other other people might be long yeah. armers too. It who, sounds like it sounds like people who actually know how to properly long arm are saying you're supposed to base the edges. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, please baste it before you give it to us. That would be great. Interesting. Okay, interesting. I mean, this is bare bone stuff. I mean, I, I gotta say, I like it. Reclamp, sit down, and quilt up as far as I can reach. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Hmm. I remove the pins from the part I want to roll up. Take one clamp off. Take the other clamp off. Hmm. And roll up the part I have quilted. Interesting. Wow. He's in San Francisco, right? I think that's about as far as I have to go. You think I can go one more? I'm not sure. Um, I think that's about as far as I can go. And um, then I can sit down and quilt. I'll have to roll a couple more times uh, to reach the very middle. And for that, eventually, I'll have to uh, take out these long sideboards and put in some shorter sideboards. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And that'll make it easier to reach all the way to the middle. Uh, but that's it. You can Google Joe Cunningham Threads Magazine, and you'll find an article I wrote a long time ago, 20 or 25 years ago, about it. how to make and use a quilt frame. Um, and in the Threads magazine there, you'll find um, plans for these legs, uh, the you know, simple 2 by 4s and 1 by 2s uh, that you can get at the lumberyard <coughs> cheaply. And I show how these, uh, the measurements and uh, the legs are pretty self-explanatory. Anybody with a saw and a screw gun can put one together in... Sarah, my friend, okay. Short order. So uh, check that out. Google Joe Cunningham Threads Magazine, and uh, you'll find that article. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Thanks for stopping by. See you next time. No, oh, he's so great. Um, you know what's interesting is like consider his studio and Jane Birch Cochran, right? I mean, this this you know her studio was completely different. I mean, her studio is full of. I mean, so many things, right? Beads and, and you know, bowls of 
stuff and, you know, it was just completely full of of all of her things, right? Her, her bugle beads and her thing. Oh, here's a picture. Well, that's not a good picture. I don't like that one. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. I actually have a picture of a bowl of beads from her and I want to get it. Um, yeah, but her work is like maximalist, right? And then you have Joe Cunningham who, and I've been in that studio. I mean, it is, he didn't set that up for filming. It's just, it's very Spartan. Pretty, pretty Spartan. Yeah, yeah, it's Spartan, exactly, it's Spartan. And it's so great, and they're both beautiful in their own way, right? Oh, Padma says that's the gallery space, that he has a room for fabric? Well, yeah, separate? I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm thinking back, and I'm thinking about like where I saw his quilts. I mean, it's not just like a completely empty room or anything like that, but like, yeah, I was there and it was like, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like Jane. Jane, Jane's place was, you know, it was crazy. It was wild. It was wild. It was a wild place. I um, have great appreciation for both of those things. Same. You know, I can really appreciate that Spartan, but my personality is like, let me dig into the beads and just lay there in them while I quilt. <laughs> yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Like I've had beads, you know, I'd have beads in my hair and I'd be like, it's great. Actually, I went out to meet Sarah and Dorothy today and uh when I came back home I was like oh right I left chips like on the table I was like eating chips yeah I was eating chips okay they're a huge part of my diet like what are you gonna do what are you gonna do it just happens okay anyway and I like was eating chips I was like I gotta go and so I put a handful of chips on the table on the table like what is that and I came back I was like Mary Fonz you are 43 years old Eric's out of town. That's a problem. Anyway, okay. So, so um, but I've got one picture I want to show you of her, of Jane Birch Cochran's studio, just because you know, it, it was so interesting, right? To see these bowls, these bowls everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. This is it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so okay. So we talked about quilting frames. We talked about Jane. We talked about children's quilts from mid-century, look at this, look at this. Just these just wonderful bowl of beads. I mean, there's tiny ones. This is a quilt folk photograph. There's tiny ones, there's huge buttons. It's wonderful, it's great, it's great, I love it. Um, so is, if Sarah's still, Sarah, is it okay? I texted you, but I now I'm using my phone for something else. If you're here, can I show pictures from our trip? I didn't wanna show them until, Kay, isn't Joe great? Um, is that okay if I show pictures from the boat today? But see, I never like to call anybody out and be like, are you here? Because sometimes people aren't. <laughs> you know what's kind of funny? Sarah might actually be asleep and Dorothy's probably awake. Anyway, um, what was I gonna do something else? I feel like I was gonna do something else tonight. It's all okay, oh good, good, yay, yay. Okay, here we go, okay. So here we are, eee! and it was so wonderful. And I'm gonna see, I have presents. I wanna give presents to this child, this beautiful child. Look at her, look at her. She's ridiculous, she's so great, she's so great. She's so great. One of the things that she did today, one of the many awesome things she did today. She also, one of the things that she did later was that she ran and she jumped into my arms and, <laughs> and I was holding her and she was like, let go, you know, like, let go. Don't, you don't have to hold me. And I was like, ah, and she was a monkey. And she was a monkey and she just held on to me and I didn't even have to hold on to her. She was like, Bleh. anyway, it was pretty fun. And, but, but something that she did on the boat in the architectural tour is like 90 minutes, you know? I didn't see anything. I was just talking to Sarah. I don't even know, I don't know anything about Chicago architecture, actually I do, but not from today. Because one of the things that was so wonderful about this girl she saw these little kids sitting near us. They were younger than she was. And they didn't look like they were having a great time. This could make me cry. Dorothy. And she, oh, she like asked her mom, like, can I like share my snacks with them? <laughs> I can't, I can't. And she was like, can I share my snacks with them? I mean, she wanted to like connect with them. And she did. And they were, you know, you know, they were fussy. They were fussy kids. And they, oh Lord, trouble, trouble. 
they, you know, they were fussy and, and they were receptive. But I mean, I just, I'll never forget it, Dorothy, how beautiful that was and how kind and giving that was. More trouble. Um, oh, that's my selfie. I never take them, so I took one. Um, anyway, this is what it's about. Um, she, she was just so, so generous and so compassionate. I was like completely just impressed and ju I just think that's so cool. It was so cool, Dorothy. I want to call her Dottie. Dottie. My grandmother's name was Dorothy and they called her Dottie. Um, so yeah. So girl, I love you. When I met you the first time, you weren't even out here yet. Now look at you. You're in Chicago taking boats. You're so cool. I think, can I say I love you? I love you so much. Okay. Um, and Sarah, I love you too. And uh, tomorrow I'll see you. And I told Dorothy, Chicago Christmas tomorrow. I'm going to come correct with some gifts. Well, I'm the auntie. Can I be like the auntie in Chicago? I mean, I don't have children. I'm going to shower you with gifts. Sarah, you better have an extra suitcase because I got some stuff. Oh, now I really got to do good. Okay, yeah. Dorothy, if you're listening, bat your eyes and look extra cute, and Mary will give you even more gifts. It's true. It's true. If you, like, jump on me and you're a monkey again, I'm toast. I'm toast, girl. Um, anyway, I don't know how to end the show any better than that. I mean, you're just, oh, Lord. I love you, too. Um, and the best aunties. That's right, Robin. That's right. I mean, at some point, you know, well, she's too young for, like, you know, makeup and getting her hair done, you know, but at some point she comes to Chicago, I'll be like, we're going to the salon. My aunt Lisa, she's, she's a great auntie. And she, you know what she does? She, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to end the show soon. I promise. But I'll just tell you this. She, um, she talks like this. Hey, hi, Mayor. How are you? It's so great to see you. And she's like, well, that's swell. And I'm just like, she's so great. And she's like, she, you know, she's like, well, late 60s she's fabulous gorgeous she's great but she's like well that'd be swell hey mare anyway she's the cool auntie she's my uh my template so i won't do that dorothy i won't be like hey dorothy how are you sounds swell but i will i will be here for you and you will always have a friend in chicago always um so okay so that's the show tonight i mean i, I just i can't I can't end it any better than that um, with my friends and uh, beautiful women who are doing wonderful things in the world. Um, so, Stephanie Cake, thank you so much. It's a pleasure as always. It's a pleasure as always. The, uh, the other night we, we ran pretty late. So tonight we're going to end, you know, about, about two hours is what we do. And uh, you're all, um, oh, gamers playing lots of phone games now because you're in California visiting your daughter great show. Mother Nature, thank you so much. You know, everybody who subscribes, I don't know, I don't know if I've said it lately, Lady K with your wine. Um, I don't know if I've said it specifically lately. I know I'm like pushing for the subscribers and it's September, so you get this like great discount. But have I mentioned lately that I appreciate everybody who is subscribed? You, you're amazing. You know, next week, AQSG in San Diego, Molly's going to be there. We're do Molly, who watches the show, we met through the show. And now we are presenting at American Quilt Study Group a paper. Well, it's not a paper yet, but it's this poster presentation. We have this whole thing. It's going to blow people's minds. And the idea that we have started on the show with all of you. We're going to go to a thing and we're going to blow their minds about this third wave quilting thing. It's amazing. And then the week after that, Stephanie Cake and I, who have never met in person, who also met on this show, and now she works on this show, we're going to go to TwitchCon. TwitchCon? What? Over Twitch That's con. really loud. <laughs> Dorothy, just so you know, I haven't forgotten about you. Um, we're going to go to TwitchCon. I mean, this is crazy. I haven't been to a convention that I wasn't working at. Maybe ever? Like, ever. So we're going to do that. And so your, subscri your subscription, I, I cannot tell you how much it helps. It helps, you know, paying the rent, keeping the lights on buying crisps, you know, but that's frivolous. I mean, you know, you got to pay the stuff. You got to get on the plane. So I really, 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 really appreciate that because it gives me faith that, like, maybe this could be, like, my real job one day, you know? Hey, hey, Mare. And yours too, Cake. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Hey, Mare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to do your aunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Mare. That's swell. Um, can you... <laughs> got to take it down. Can you... <laughs> 
Can you remind us what is do you what is what are you able to stream at AQSG? I know that you have two streaming times where you're going to kind of do some cool stuff, but I can't remember what you're allowed to show like live. Well, you... okay. So so what I'm going to do is there's a mixer. There's like a mixer. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to be live there, and I'm going to grab some people. Right, I'm going to grab people, bring them on camera, talk to them, um, and I'm also the next. This so is the net on set. Whoa, I forget what day, but there's a morning like ten to noon kind of thing. I believe. Yeah. I think that's I think that's Saturday. Um. So I'm gonna arrange some things. So I'm gonna talk to people, you know, in, in that way. So I mean, it's kind of a crack up. Like I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but there's gonna be there's I mean there's gonna be stuff, and some of it's for subscribers only, and some of it's open for everybody. Um. Well, yeah. I don't know which is which right now. Oh my God, it's been a long day. But um, but there's there's you know activities going on there, and and I can't I can't stream some of the paper presentations, of course, which I wouldn't anyway, um, because it's not my content, right? But there are um, all kinds. I mean, Mary Kay Walvogel, Barbara Brackman, she's camera shy again. She might not sit for an interview even for like five minutes. I don't know. It'd be great. My mom will be there. Molly's gonna be there. Marsha's gonna be there. M Hicks. So. There's going to be lots of things. And, and, and just like with QuiltCon or any of these places that I go, you never know. I don't promise that there will be like a pop-up stream or like a random stream. But, you know, it might be that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go live because it's always available, right, this channel. So, yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for subscribing. And if you're on the fence about subscribing, do it now. Do it. Can I can I add one public yes, service course, announcement to those eleventh hour and fifty nine second or fifty nine minute subscribers? Yes, because there is a special oh, uh, Sunday right. social tomorrow, and that's I know right. that always gets people excited and wanting yep. to subscribe. Yeah. If you subscribe tonight right. and you up your you up your subscription to another tier, please let us know because when the link goes out or the the stuff happens tomorrow, yeah. we'll miss you. Um, you know, Robin is making this so much better, but we want to <laughs> yes. make it easy on her. So, yes, yes. If you um, definitely reach out to us through the email, which is quiltnerdshow at gmail.com. Yeah, thank you for that. Thank you. Quiltnerdshow, quiltnerdshow at gmail.com. Uh, if you sign up for a tier two or tier three subscription tonight, you can join us for the Sunday social. It's super fun. 11 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and yeah, and we need, but we need your email to send you the invite. Okay, everybody. Ah, it's so good. I'll see you all on Tuesday uh, for money quilts. And I, Lady K, I'm going to have my cheese puffs. And this is what we do. We have fun. We talk about quilts and like the world. Okay. Bye, everybody. You're the best. I love you, Sarah. Bye, Dorothy. Whee!